Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope you're doing well. I'm good. Will, how are you? I'm a little annoyed at you, Bob. What, what did I do? I'm a little annoyed because I've been watching the Batman the for like 24 hours straight and you had to, you couldn't cancel the podcast. You had to just you know if you asked if you if you had asked I might have <laughs> but would I would I have let's be real here if I wanted to say Bob I have been watching the Batman for twenty four hours straight uh-huh. and I would like to keep doing it during the middle of the podcast would you have let me you would have said no you would have no. called me a bad name yes. and you would have gotten I don't know scootish or something to co-host <laughs> the show with you that's true I just yeah. would have gotten somebody else. I'm, uh, I'm just kidding. I haven't been watching it that much, but I have been watching all well, the bonus features is that are out? on HBO Max. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's on HBO right now. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's It came good. out yesterday. Movie's yeah. fantastic. It's a great movie. It's a little long. <laughs> Very long, but I think because now it's on uh, HBO Max, you can watch it at home. The length shouldn't affect you that much because you can pause it whenever you want and go back to it when you're ready. So there. you can watch it like a TV show. There was a guy on TikTok who was like, classic songs you should listen to, part one. And it was something in the way. Some Zoomer <laughs> guy. And, yeah. and and all of the comments were like, this dude saw Batman once. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you go to the Wikipedia page for something in the way, there's a whole section of that song dedicated to the Batman and its effect on that song. How next time you watch it, I want a count of how many times they play it. Twice. That's it. That once in the beginning, once at the end. I thought they play it throughout the whole damn thing. No, I think it just gets confused because a lot of the music just sounds like something. Yeah, okay. In the way. <laughs> but it, it's just the the actual song is only played twice. That is true. Yeah. The chat's making fun of me because I'm small in, in the frame. I'm so, I don't feel like <laughs> fixing it. I I th- the lens is wide and I don't want to readjust the whole layout. Yeah. Rye Bread said it's the tiny bobs from the ads. <laughs> <laughs> so right now on my desk over here, you know what I could show you guys. Uh well, first of all, we got a lot to talk about. First thing we want to talk about yeah. is uh Game Game Boy Advance games might be coming to the Switch because of a new leak that just happened. And we're going to talk all about that. But first, I want to show you guys um, a black screen. Oh, wow. I have been doing this today. I have my Steam Deck here. And uh, I've been putting emulators on it. And, and this has been going for about an hour now. Maybe over an hour. It's it, it it's the, the beauty is that it's... Oh, hold on. You also have to friggin' like plug in a mouse and keyboard because it's a pain in the ass otherwise. So it's one file. It's MU deck. And you just okay, install that. that. It's just one executable and it just goes, which is awesome. But it's taken over an hour, <laughs> which I was not expecting. But it's going to install that, all of the emulators onto it. That's just for the emulator itself, right? It's not like any of the ROMs or anything. Correct. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's gonna run. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's basically a front end for all the emulators. Well, it, it is all of the emulators, and then it's also a front end for the emulators. Right. Bob, did you get the art book for the Batman? No, is there an art book? I, I do want that. There is. Uh, I've seen parts of it, and IGN did like a uh, ten facts from it. It's very interesting. I might have to. I have to put that on my Amazon wish list. My birthday is over, but Father's Day is coming up. Hint, hint. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> also, Mother's Day is like in three weeks. God damn it. We better the, get on that. The Art of the Batman hardcover. I'm going to get it. At the court. All right. We, a special thank you to Zizo for the hundo bits. Uh, I've been waiting all day for this. Well, um, aren't you glad we're here now? Uh, yeah. Spankwise, thanks for the eight months. Been watching for a long time. Keep up the great work. You're one of the only people on Twitch I actually sub to. Well, thank you, Spankwise. I'm honored to be that person. And Spud Potato, thanks for the thousand and fifty bits. Did Uwu know that the? Oh, hold on. 
I can't read this. Did Uwu <laughs> know thought the Switz, uh, the critic, the critically acclaimed MMO MMOWPG Final Fantasy? Okay, no, he's he's doing like it. He put this through like an Uwu generator. I'm not reading this. But thanks for all of your money. Um. Bob, you're confusing it with the jewel cover of Ave Maria Witch, the Riddler he plays all the time in the movie. No, I'm not. <laughs> they they do play Ave Maria a lot in that movie. That they do do. Do do. Okay, so Do-do. Game Boy Advance yes. games. We're getting them on the Switch. Wow. Can't believe For it. We talked this time. We talked about this before. We talked about what our 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 what Game Boy Advance games we would want. Or did we talk about it, regular Game Boy? One or the other. We must. I feel like you can't talk about Game Boy without talking about Game Boy Advance because they're just all part of the same family. There know? are some really great Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Yeah, gotta say, all together, not that many. <laughs> no, uh, and I would argue that the Game Boy Advance. Uh, has not only a superior library, but one of the best libraries in all of video gaming. Yeah, it's so got a fantastic it would be library. Foolish! It would be foolish on Nintendo's part to not just do all of them. And there's really no reason why they can't, because all Game Boys, can, all Game Boy Advances can play GBA games, even the ones that technically can't. <laughs> Yeah, so if they make a Game Boy Advance emulator, it should be able to do regular Game Boy games yeah. as well and all of that stuff. Um, I remember talking, like ranking Game Boy Advance games. Was I? Did we not do that? We might have. Oh, we did. Ga- we did regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think we did Game Boy Advance. Okay. Wow, we could have done that. Well, too bad. We're doing. Uh, we're yeah. talking about this leak instead. Yeah. Uh, last year there were whispers that Nintendo was planning to bring Game Boy games to its Switch Online subscription to join the existing libraries of NES and SNES titles, plus the N64 and Genesis catalogs available as part of the expansion pack tier. Uh, now a leak seems to provide evidence that Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games may be hitting the service soon, according to Trash Bandicoot. On Twitter, yeah, that baby, is the perfect name. <laughs> so mad I don't have that name. Uh, files have been leaked onto 4chan, which include a Nintendo-developed GBA emulator codenamed Sloop and Sloop. a Game Boy emulator called uh, Hiyoko, both developed by Nintendo of Europe's Nerd. That's a Nintendo European Research and Development Team. Uh, the Paris-based subsidiary responsible for such uh, for much of the company's emulation efforts in recent years, including emulators in the classic mini consoles and the N64, GameCube, and Wii emulation in Super Mario 3D All Stars. Sloop. And he... Yeah, we're, we're, I'm just... sorry. I'm sorry. Did I did, uh, I, not... inter- did I interrupt you at the wrong time? No, no, no. I. <laughs> It sounded like you were going to say something, then you cut off, so I thought... I just yelled sloop, but that's all I did. Oh. It sounded like shoot, and then nothing. No, just sloop. Um, okay. So are, are we at the tweets now? Are we up to the tweets? We're at, yes, we're at the tweets. We're at the tweets. Trash Bandicoot says, So Nintendo's official Game Boy Advance emulator for the Nintendo Switch just leaked. Now it's just a matter of waiting for a Nintendo Switch Online to add GBA. And there's a screenshot... That includes four screenshots of a bunch of ROMs that they presumably tested. Yeah. Um, you have Ninja Five O, which is not a good game. I hear it's good. I, I heard it was good. It's not. I've it's heard not that good. game's like amazing. It's but... really not. Yeah. Um, the people who think that that game's amazing probably never played Rolling Thunder because it's just Rolling Thunder. <laughs> um, Pokemon Pinball Super Robot. T- Tyson Original Generation, Tactics Ogre, Mario Kart, Kudu Kudu Kuduin, Kududian, Kududian, uh, GBA Boot, I don't know, Pokemon Trade, 
Uh, golden son Isaac, golden son Jocko, golden son Lo Lost Age, Mr. Drifter 2, Mario Brothers. Uh, and that's it, basically. Okay. But the most... The thing here that that really uh, kind of ruins it for me. In the bottom right, there's a picture of a flash cart <laughs> with the, with an with a micro SD card, huh? And it says resume suspend point from emulator onto original hardware to confirm original behavior. Try this on PC. So I guess that's like a dev note. So like that must be a dev note. I could see like like today's development is weird. It's weird weird yeah. times in development these days. So like why not use the tools available to you that have been made by, you know, uh 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 fans. Why not use those tools to develop like a like a legitimate version of of your of of, of your library of your, of, of your software so like like to like i i could see why they want to do this i could never in my life see a company that's developing for nintendo showing nintendo hey look we used one of these <laughs> well it isn't the wii version of super mario brothers on the virtual console isn't that isn't that ROM taken from a torrent site? I always thought that. Uh, I I think it's unclear if it was taken from a torrent site. Because yeah, my point being is like Nintendo obviously knows about these methods. Right. And um, if that story is true, then they're not above, you know, going that route to do an official version of uh, games emulation. So, yeah, it's very possible that somebody at Nerd went out, bought a flash cart just to see how GBA emulation works on a certain level. Right. I mean, yeah, there have been GBA emulators made by Nintendo before, but this is for Switch Online, so they want to do something different. They want to do it the way they did all their other emulators. Right. Um, and they tested a lot of games. I, I read uh, off yeah. a small list, but there's... An even bigger list somewhere out there. It, it basically, I mean, they're they're probably going to want to make sure like almost every game is going to be available to to make sure that this emulator is going to run as good as possible. Um, yeah. There's more tweets though. It says this is already starting to do numbers thanks to random lookups. So I'll bring in some extra context in case anyone has any doubts. Four files were leaked so far onto 4chan. Two N NSPs with a 7-zip archive that has loose NCAs. I don't know what that means. The yeah. two NSPs is a Nintendo-developed GBA emulator. I was trying to find this. How do I get this? <laughs> Zana 4chan. Yeah. Uh, so you have to scour 4chan. <laughs> um... The first comment on Fortune is, I'm 12. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you. Uh, it's called Sloop. And the 7-Zip archive is called Hioko, which is a Game Boy emulator. Is it now? Let's Google that. That is a woman from Danganronpa. <laughs> okay. Uh with all the Game Boy games being separate separate applications. Okay, weird. These emulators are developed by Nerd, Nintendo European Research and Development, and are both functional, albeit with a few bugs. So here you have uh, a screen. Sh so here you have a picture of the sloop icon, which is a sailboat for some reason. Yeah. Um, well, a sloop is uh, has to do with boats. Oh. I know that from the Beach Boys. <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> um, then the next slide, if you will, is a is a picture of a Nintendo Switch screen or a monitor that has Game Boy icons that look horrible, and it says Super Mario Land English. Uh, and then there's another Game Boy icon next to it, and then there's a Sloop icon next to it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this development version has each game running as a separate application yeah i'd imagine if nintendo is going to release this officially they'll want it all in one like they have all their other 
uh switch online uh classic console stuff uh that is interesting though that they're currently individual apps because that's how virtual console worked right virtual console every game was its own thing in its own custom emulator oh do you think maybe instead of being nintendo switch online they might want to sell these individually that could be a little evidence of that it could be but i feel like game boy like the value of the, of Game Boy games is so much lower. Yeah, it really than is. NES and SNES games that it would just make so much more financial sense to bundle them in one collection and sell them that way. You're right. Uh, here, so Trash Bandicoot tried to leak. I uh, tried to link to somebody uh, who had footage of it, and they don't. Mm-hmm. Like 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 it like it didn't work. Um. So, like, I guess they deleted it. So here's another person. Here's a screen recording of what he posted. Hopefully the Nintendo Ninjas aren't going to strike me down. Oh, great. Here we go. Guys, don't don't narc on us. Yeah. So here he's, he's playing the Game Boy Advance version of Yoshi's Island. Uh, it must be. It had, a, it yeah, had Yoshi's, Yoshi's Island, Island and, yeah. Super, and, and Mario Super- Brothers on it. Yeah, so that's Super Mario Advance 3, I think. And then here's uh, Mario Land. Okay. Oh, wait, I, mi- I missed the home screen. Uh, There is the home screen. The home screen has... Yeah, it has Game Boy Game, Game Boy Game, Sloop, Game Boy Game, Game Boy Game. Yeah. And then there's a picture of friggin' Wario. <laughs> Oh, it's probably okay. That makes sense. Cool. Um, so yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I guess we don't know if it's going to be a Nintendo Switch Online application or if it's going to be individual games. But I just, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't I make mean, sense for them to to, to change it yeah. up. Now, do you think this is going to be an expansion pass? Again, I don't think the the value just isn't there. You know. Mm-hmm. Like N sixty four games are, you know, higher. I don't want to say higher quality games, but they're more expensive to emulate. They're you know of a high. I don't want like I guess of a higher caliber than Game Boy games. The Genesis games they're pay, they're mostly just paying for the license to Sega stuff. Mm-hmm. So I really don't think. I mean, yeah, they could add it to expansion pass, but. I feel like they could just as easily put it in uh, regular Switch Online and still turn like the same profit that they have been turning for the past few years, you know? I feel like they could definitely expand the user base of regular Nintendo Switch Online, but they're probably... I mean, I I could see this being part of the expansion pass for sure. They're, they're, they, they need to add more value to the expansion pass. <laughs> True. Um, well, unless they do something like Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games are on Switch Online, but Game Boy Advance is part of the expansion pass. That would be dick. True. But no, that that's, that that's very reasonable. Yeah. I think I think that that could I mean, it's Nintendo. They're going to do something wacky. We could speculate all we want, yeah. but they're going to pull the trigger and it's going to be something weird. Yeah. Um but here's more tweets. We got Mondo Mega who says the library of GBA games they've tested for this thing is massive. Tested is the key word. Doesn't mean they'll all actually launch on the service. Yellow. Uh, then he has a he has a chart and it says yellow equals in the ROM folder at some point, but not in the leaked build. There is one other game with evidence of being tested though. Uh, and then he has, okay, he doesn't actually say. Um, here's the list. Astro Boy. Car Battler Joe, Castlevania, Ari of Sor- Sorrow, Circle of the Moon, Choo Choo Rocket, Drill Dozer, Fire Emblem, F Zero, Game and Watch, Gallery, Golden Sun, Golden Sun, Gunstar Hero, uh, Harvest Moon, Kingdom Hearts, Kirby, Amazing Mirror, Koro Koro Puzzle, Kudu 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 Rian, <laughs> Lufia, uh, Mario and Luigi, G- Mario Golf, Mario Kart, Mario Party, Mario Tennis, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Mega Man, Battle Network 5, Team Proto Man, Mega Man, Battle Network 2, Mega Man Zero Three, Not Ooh. one or two, but three. 
<laughs> Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission, M- Mr. Driller, Ninja 5 Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon, uh, 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 Super Mario Brothers 3. Wait, hold on. Roll it back. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and Pokemon Pinball. No fucking actual Pokemon games. <laughs> According um, to you. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Why wouldn't they? Not like the mainline Pokemon games, but like Mystery Dungeon and Pinball? Why not? Wait, what are you talking about? You just said, I know you have this thing where like Pokemon games are not going to be on Switch Online. No, no, or no. Or anything like that. These are the games that they have tested. Yeah, so? And I, I'm saying there are no actual Pokemon games on this list. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Super Mario Bros. 3, yeah. Super Robot Tyson, Tactics Ogre, Wario Land 4, WarioWare, Inc., Yoshi's Island, and Zelda Minish Cap. So, uh, again, these are tested, except for the ones in yellow. There's only a few in yellow. Uh, maybe yeah. like uh, Maybe like a fourth of them are in yellow. Uh, mm-hmm. And the ones in yellow were in the folder, but not in the leaked build. So they're a little right. more questionable, but uh, these were looked at at some point. A lot of g- fantastic games here. I don't know yeah. anything that's missing besides the Pokemon games. That Astro Boy game is really good. Yeah. Omega Factor. Yeah. So are the Castlevanias. We yes. got uh, uh, Metroid. Um, Both Metroids. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think... This is a solid list we have here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he goes on to say, there are multiple screenshots of different berry tag screens from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. There we go. There, Saved okay. in the emulator, most likely taken during link cable emulation testing. Oh. Not much to talk about with the Game Boy Color, though. The build of Hyoko uh, we have here is in an earlier state than Sloop. Each game is a separate app, and there's only four of them. Super Mario Land, Link's Awakening DX, Tetris, and QIX. Quix. So, Super- Link's Awakening DX, that's a that's one of those dual cartridges, right? Yes. It, I, think it, I think it can play in both a Game Boy, regular Game Boy and a Game Boy Color. Okay. So yeah, no like actual Game Boy Color games then. Yeah. Okay. That is interesting. That is very interesting. That would be that's weird that they'd have a whole ass Game Boy Advance emulator. And then and then also a whole ass Game Boy emulator, but no Game Boy Color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um But no, this opens up the door for a whole lot more stuff to be added to nintendo switch online absolutely absolutely it's 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 very exciting it's it's shocking that it leaked like this but Mm -hmm. if it leaked to me that means that they're close to being done or possibly even announcing it i maintain the same stance i always have with leaks like this um yeah it means they're working on it it doesn't mean we're getting it ever (laughs) like (laughs) Like I like I, it looks like they've worked on it a lot, and it makes a lot of sense for Nintendo to release something like this. But yeah, uh, until Nintendo makes an announcement, this could be literally anything. It could be something they, right. they just like could be could be a test. Uh, it could be fake. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, uh, I, I just try to maintain uh, 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 pessimism. <laughs> no, and. You're right to do that, uh, but at the same time, like this is just this just feels like something that there's no reason not to, you know? Yeah, it's been how many years, and like they've proven that Switch Online is a success, and like people like the games that you get with it. So why not throw in the next Nintendo console? That makes the most logical sense. I just wonder how long it's going to be if we do get it. Uh, yeah. Until September again, isn't that when they start <laughs> releasing this stuff? Yeah, that's when we got N sixty four, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably it probably won't we probably won't see anything about this until September, or maybe E well, three. Maybe I mean, they'll announce it. Maybe. Well, no, Bob. There is no E three anymore. Remember, it's dead. 
Oh yeah, good. Uh, summer games. Um, uh, Jeff Keeley. Yeah. Jeff Keeley. <laughs> summertime. Jeff. The Jeff Keeley video game bonanza. Yes. Uh, yeah. By September, they'll they'll have the worked out. What you know, whether or not Game Boy games are going to be separate apps or part of a collection. Uh, they'll have they'll rename Sloop to Game Boy Advance on mm -hmm. Switch Online. So. Uh, there's one last tweet we have. Oatmeal Dome, who uh, kind of he's a. I guess you can call him a data miner. Uh, he kind of just uh, takes the data mines and and uh, puts them in English. <laughs> uh -huh. He said here, Sloop, traces left behind in the code appear to indicate that the GBA emulator is being co-developed by Nintendo European Research and Development, NERD, the one that we know of already, and yeah. Panasonic Vietnam. Oh. NERD was responsible for emulation in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Nintendo Switch Online, and the mini consoles. So NERD is they're the they're the emulation bros. Right. Yeah, that we that we know that we mentioned before, but what is Panasonic Vietnam doing in this? I don't know. I mean, they made a GameCube, I, didn't they? <laughs> they did. But I just find it <laughs> weird that like Nintendo would seek outside, you know, counseling on something like this right. especially when they have a whole branch that's proven that they can do emulation and do it well in the past so i'm trying to see something bigger than we think it is i'm trying to see what they've done in terms of video game development and all i'm getting is this leak all <laughs> i'm getting is information about this leak and also their location in vietnam <laughs> yeah uh, maybe I mean it could be a physical device maybe Panasonic's working on a physical device <laughs> oh that would be, be my dream we finally get that Game Boy classics console everybody keeps talking about yeah I mean who I mean yeah like what did they do with the Game & Watch it's like who made that I guess Nintendo well yeah why does Nintendo need help for physical hardware They're, they make physical yeah. hardware doesn't make much sense. Unless, you know, they're asking Panasonic to make specific screens. You know, cheap, True. cheap, modernized screens that they could easily reproduce. True. They could be... So, like, for the Switch, OLED, we have Samsung screens because they right. make really good OLED screens. Uh, you don't need a good screen for a for a portable, like, like modernized Game Boy Advance. You need no. a, a sick, at most... 640 uh by 320 i think screen so and that's double the resolution already yeah so you need you don't need the best screen but you still need a screen that can pass the mustard in 2022 right so i'm sorry 480p yeah. It is is double the resolution of a Game Boy Advance. So Yeah, so so you need something that's like bright, uh that doesn't draw a lot of power, uh that is large enough that you could see everything. Uh it's it's a lot more than just remaking the same the same thing with all the games loaded up on it. I mean, that would be a a, a dream console to have something that just I mean, it's possible that they just load it with um baked in games that would suck it would be great yeah. if you can put your own stuff on it you know it connects to the internet and stuff yeah but i don't know i they probably would want it to be in as inexpensive as possible so they won't do something like that right uh lj wvu says they could use the screens from the game and watch units that's true those were yes good those are good screens i'm trying to see if i can find who made those uh, imitate the LCD displays and modes modernized. Blah 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 blah. No, oh, that's for the DSiWare. Uh, yeah, I uh, I it's gonna take me a lot more time to figure that out. Yeah, and then Gadget Mike said, "Did he just say pass the mustard?" <laughs> yes, I am thirty-five years old. I say things that Grandpa say. Who to doggy? Uh, anyway, so that's it. That's all we got to say about the Game Boy Advance games. Yes. Uh, I hope it happens. I, I would love to play some of those games. Um, 
Look, I like playing these games emulated and on my other little little fancy little devices, uh, even the analog pocket, but having yes. it on a Switch or on an official Nintendo hardware, uh, having all of the best games in one little application uh, would be much better. So yeah, uh, I yeah, would, it would go a long way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anyway, that's it for that. Uh, mm-hmm. we gotta talk. We gotta say thank you to Tio Kenobi for the eight months. GBA go. <laughs> uh, Migs Luna, thank you for the twenty months. And Yankus, thank you for the twenty five. Will as an op, as an apostle of the air fry church. What <laughs> model do you recommend for Bob? I, I, you better say none. I don't want one. I strongly recommend that you get an air fryer with a front loading basket. Those, okay. that's the type I have. So you just pull it out and you put all your stuff in and you put it back in. Don't get any with a lid. Don't get any with a door. Get one with a pull out front basket. And also make sure that the the controls are easy to use. That's another thing that a lot of air fryers overcomplicate. I made Hello Fresh today, <laughs> uh, and I only made I, I made bib and bop, and it was uh, okay. It's two portions for two people. Right. I am one person, <laughs> so I plated it for one person, mm-hmm. but I fucked it up. And I put all of the vinegar on it, and it was I, uh, I, I, it was very vinegary. Oh, this is sounds was, bad. It was still good though. I ate the whole thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we got. Oh, he also says Bob is white and blue your favorite colors. Uh, I like a good like greenish blue, like a teal. I just think white looks clean with it though. So that's the yeah. that's the vibe. So, so do I now have it. to get a blue hat? Do you or can I keep one? wearing the black hat? You keep no, I'm just asking. Hat? I'm just um, asking if we're gonna get I don't blue think teal I don't think teal necessarily looks good in certain clothes. Like I think a yeah. I think a shirt that's like a heather teal would look really cool, but A, I don't think yeah. people are gonna wear it, and B, it would be really expensive to make the perfect color. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, Scott the Sloth, thanks for the 200 bits. Uh, don't deny the air fryer, Bob. It will bring you to Flavor Town. <laughs> I went to Flavor Town like two weeks ago. He did. Uh, uh, I'm sure the mayor of Flavor Town knows all about the joy that is the air frying revolution. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, California governor interfered with the Activision lawsuit. What a piece of shit. Oh, God. This again. California <laughs> Governor Gavin Newsom has been accused of interfering oh, in the Activision guy. Blizzard sexual harassment lawsuit. Allegations uh, were made by Melanie Proctor, Assistant Chief Counsel for California's Department of Fair Employee Employment and Housing, after her boss, Chief Counsel Jeanette Whipper, uh, was fired by the governor last month. According to Bloomberg, Proctor resigned in protest to the firing and sent an email to staff saying the governor began to interfere in recent weeks. And uh, as we continue to win in state court, uh, this interference increased, mimicking the interest of Activision's counsel. She added, the office of the governor repeatedly demanded advance notice of litigation strategy and of next steps in the litigation and that her boss, Whipper, attempted to protect the agency's independence. I hereby resign effective April 13th, 2022, in protest of the interference and Jeanette's termination, Proctor said. Uh, Newsom's communication director, Aaron Mellon, said claims of interference by our office are categorically false, adding that the governor's office will continue to support uh, DFEH in their efforts to fight all forms of discrimination and protect Californians. Uh, yeah, and the, the history of the lawsuit was filed on July last year and became the first in a long series of accusations against Activision Blizzard over its allegations of frat boy culture. It is currently uh, pending in Los Angeles Supreme Court with an expected trial date in February 2023. 
though it's unclear if these current allegations and departures of Whipper and Proctor will affect the lawsuit. Activision Blizzard has currently settled another sexual harassment suit uh, with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunities Commission for $18 million, but faces similar accusations against uh, anonymous individuals of co- and, of course, the state of California. Uh, I'm a little scared that uh, the 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 elites here are going to interfere <laughs> with with this with with this whole situation, and where no, the justice will never be served. Uh, I guess, I guess, because like Activision is a very powerful force in the Californian economy, so they've got friends in high places. But this is this is the absolute worst look that you can have right now. Being being a defender of any sort, no matter how small, of the biggest villain in, in an entire industry. It's because they're all you pieces know? of shit. <laughs> they're all pieces of shit. And they're all just being pieces of shit. And they want to continue to keep being pieces of shit. That's what it is. And they're helping I, each other be yes. pieces of shit. Yes, I'm not. I'm not fighting that statement. I. I'm just, just saying. It's just gonna. Like, we're just perpetuating the cycle of just of this. You know, rich people in power just continue to be pieces of shit to everybody else. I'm just saying, like, here was your chance to not screw this up and do like the least amount of damage possible, which is just do nothing. And the governor's office, led by allegedly, allegedly, the governor himself is stepping in to, you know, just just sweep this under the rug or like stop, stop all the litigation. Yeah, that's it's it's ridiculous. Why did the state of California even file the lawsuit if the governor is going to have a problem with it? Yeah. Wouldn't he have had to sign off on that? Or is that not, not necessarily. how that works? No. No, it's not how that works. So I mean, I I, I assume that uh what's the fucking guy's name? The fucking uh uh Gavin Activision? Newsom? No, the Activision guy. Oh, uh Kodak, Bobby Kodak. I just, I'm a, we're still assuming that Bobby Kodak is out when when the Xbox uh uh, 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 acquisition is finalized. But We're that's not assuming until next that, year, but that's that's been changing like every you know every other week. I I read something before that they still don't know what Codex's role is going to be post Microsoft acquisition. I think that that's just a formality so that. Uh, nobody's worried about like stock prices and stuff. I guess. And that's so people at the company aren't worried, even though everybody wants him out. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Xbox wants to force him out. And, yeah. uh, I feel, I, I, this is, this might keep him in power. This might be bad. This whole, yeah. Gavin and do something. So this is, this is a bad time. This is a bad time. Yeah, that's the darkest timeline, as they say. Um. Anyway, uh, Jag Racer in the chat says the shop sh- shop section of your site could use some work, but the landing page is nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's why we have a landing page because I have no control yeah. over the actual uh shop section. Like when you click this, it this is a uh, Screenwaves website. If I want to fix this, I need to get a different. What do you call it? fulfillment and i don't want to do that uh and then the, the cruster says bob you should set up emu deck on your steam deck literally doing that right now uh <laughs> it's one of the best front ends for emulation on the steam deck it makes it way easier also is your next video about the steam deck it is uh i will say though um I just got like a litany of errors while I was just installing. Like I looked at my Steam Deck while you were reading this article and I wanted to put it on the charger. But yeah, I got a litany of of error messages about how none of the friggin' emulators could open. I don't even oh, know why geez. they're opening. <laughs> but yeah, I decided to wait until I'm done 
uh to finish the install because i want to go along with the uh, retro game core's uh uh what do you call it his uh his guide yeah anyway uh let's keep going with the news we got yeah. playstation plus devastating to odd world soul storm what yes uh, Oddworld Soulstorm being a free game on PlayStation Plus was devastating for sales, according to its creator. Lauren Lanning, the founder of Oddworld Inhabitants, said the game was downloaded close to 4 million times through PlayStation Plus, significantly more than the studio's expectations of 50 to 100,000. Uh, speaking on the Xbox Expansion Pass game, uh, sorry, Xbox Expansion Pass podcast, bought it by Video oh. Games Chronicle, uh, Lanning said. There was nothing malicious about the deal on Sony's end, but circumstances made it a double-edged sword. Soulstorm was free to download in April of 2021, the same month it launched. And while Sony has never made it clear how it comes to this agreement with developers, it's understood that a, one, a one-off payment is made. Landing explained that Oddworld Inhabitants and its partner developers were already struggling when they were approached by Sony. We were hitting a number of legacy, technical, and debt issues and talent issues, he said. The developer needed more money to finish the game and didn't expect launch sales on PS5 to earn more than what Sony offered because in January, when the game was due to launch, there was still a severe shortage of consoles. We were supposed to deliver in January, so at the time, there wasn't going to be any game machines. We were like, how, how many could we possibly sell, Landing continued. Uh, we need the money to complete the project, and we thought we did a pretty good deal. In January, there's no way we'll sell more than this. COVID-19 pandemic pushed Soulstorm back three months, however, and by this point, more, PS3, more PS5s more uh, PS were in the wild. Therefore, despite Sony essentially funding the final portion of development, Lanning said the 4 million downloads were devastating. Because it slipped to April, we had the highest download games on PS5, and it was, I think, approaching close to 4 million units or something like that for free because they were all subscriptions, he said. So for us, it was devastating. Of course, there's no evidence to suggest that Oddworld Inhabitants actually lost out on potential millions of sales. A benefit of a PS Plus game is being able to try out uh, try out games you normally wouldn't consider buying yourself, so many Soulstorm downloads may not have necessarily translated into sales. That's not to say that all studios consider PS Plus a problem for their eventual sales, as the developers of Rocket League and Fall Guys have commented on the importance of the service for establishing their games. Uh, so, our chat, of course, with the good ones here. Mm-hmm. Flo says, no, that game sucking was devastating. <laughs> I've then, heard it's a bad game. I've heard it's not a good game. <laughs> and then the last gloss, he says, Lanning always seems to be complaining. <laughs> um, and then LJWVU says, Oddworld as a series sold 7 million units. The PS5 game was downloaded that much because there wasn't much else available. They're crying foul over nothing. I don't think they're crying foul over nothing. I think this is an interesting topic of conversation. I think he brings up interesting points. I think the fact that it's Odd Worlds, you know, doesn't help that much because Odd World is a series liked by a handful of reviewers. And that's it. <laughs> I, um, it's never it's never really been like a top tier gaming franchise. I, but I, I think I, it's interesting that we got a peek behind the curtain of how like subscription services like ps plus and possibly even games with gold works for these developers and when it doesn't work in their favor because we never hear stories like this so, so i i yeah we talk about those deals all the time the playstation plus and the, and the, and the xbox uh live free games we talk about those all the time and i i've always been curious about how that benefits the developers and I'm always curious how it works when a game launches as a free game. Like, yeah. uh, I think that's what made Rocket League a huge success was right. that it launched like that. Um, well, yeah, Rocket League, it launched on PS Plus 
And then good word of mouth kept that going so that when it, you know, in the next month when it lapsed, people who didn't get it would go out and buy it because they saw their friends were having a good time. And then when it launched on other systems, people went out and bought it on those. Right. It it was like one of the first PlayStation Plus games, I think. Um, Yeah. And... But but ever since then, I've been hearing bad things about about being, about being part of PlayStation Plus. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that PlayStation gives them like a like a sweet deal. Um, but in this case, I feel like it's just them looking at five million downloads, and and just the thought of like they probably got paid a lot of money, but not five million copies worth yeah, of a lot of money. But they never would have. Yeah. They never would have gotten to 5 million copies. Yeah. If the game was any yeah. good, they probably could have sold, you know, 10 million copies. They probably could have da- been downloaded 5 million times, yeah. and then yeah. good word of mouth would have given them a lot more. But the game apparently sucks, so they weren't able to they weren't able to do it. Yeah. I th- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, now the chat's talking. Yeah, Rocket League uh, was twenty bucks back in the day when it when it was on yeah, PlayStation it, it Plus. Was, yeah, it was originally you had to pay for it, but now it's free to play. So, yeah. but you know, it got to be it got to the point where it can go free to play because of its success initially at launch, thanks and to that, it being part of PlayStation Plus. And then that was another huge boom for them when they did that. Rocket League has a lot of great. Uh, they did a lot of great, uh, uh, like like moves that uh, kind of predated other companies. Like they were crossplay yeah. really early on. Um, yeah. They they did the free to play model uh, pretty early on. Uh, mm-hmm. They 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 uh, they knew what they were doing, and that yeah. they they deserve a lot of credit for that. Uh, also, it was just a good game. It was just a simple good game. But even oh. even even putting aside for a second the quality of the game, uh, I think that this is, I think this is a problem that like Sony might need. To, I mean, I don't know how much Sony can do for it because like, let's say they gave Oddworld like a million dollars as part of their deal, mm-hmm. probably wasn't that much, but let's just say it was a million, and they. You know, they st- stood to have gotten maybe seven million had they actually not done that, and seven, you know, the five million people downloaded the game instead. You know, it, it, I wonder, like, does Sony give certain developers more or less money depending on the game, their forecast for sales, and things like that? It, I, uh, I would imagine which, it's a forecast for sales type thing. Yeah. Uh, like, Odd World. We think this game is going to sell half a million units, so we're going to give you the equivalent of a half a million unit profit. Oddworld has a 66% on Metacritic and a user score mm. of 6.4, so it seems pretty much in line. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd imagine it's like a forecast of the sales kind of thing. I, I'd imagine that they got a pretty good deal, and I can't imagine them... I mean, I don't know. The, the, the game... I don't think the game would have sold that good anyway. No. But no. and it, yeah, that that's the ironic thing was this is probably the only way people would have played yeah. Oddworld. <laughs> May I mean this could have gotten sales for past Oddworld games on the PlayStation 5. That's true, yeah. Um so I don't know, the question here is did they make more or less than they would have if they weren't on PlayStation Plus? I think it's possible that they made that they probably broke even. I think it's possible that they probably made it exactly yeah. as much as they would yeah. have. I, I think he saw that like they, you know, four or five million people downloaded the game when normally they're lucky if they hit one million downloads. Right. And like, it, you know, something inside him broke because that could have been act that could have been more. And I'd it like could to have s- probably helped to keep the studio afloat. I'd like to see the metrics on who of those five million who beat the game. Because like, <laughs> Uh, it's a free game, so you're not like inclined to to right. you know play the whole thing through. You're just kind of trying it out, and that's five million. That's millions of people who probably wouldn't have played the game otherwise. And 
yeah. you're getting a chance to show these people your work and it would give them if they like it they're going to want to buy more stuff uh yeah. and it, it sounds like they kind of screwed it so so basically i think the moral of the story is if you're going to release a game on playstation plus for free uh it's got to be good or else it's not gonna yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna be good for you yeah i mean i mean releasing a game is is rough because how do you get it in front of people like even if the game's really yeah. good you're not guaranteed to get it in front of people um mm -hmm. so being on playstation plus for free is a great way to get it in front of people but uh yeah it's got to be good or else it's not gonna work especially out. a series like odd world which has you know you know, for a long time, struggled with trying to get, you know, mass appeal. Like, people have heard of Oddworld. They never really, like, played it or, like, even tried it. This was a good chance for them to give it a shot. Right. And if they liked it, maybe they could have gone back and tried the other games. But, you know, I guess nobody liked it. <laughs> uh, So that's that. Sad. Very sad. Yeah. Very sad. Uh, what do we got next? Will we got uh Sonic? I didn't know about this. Uh, uh yeah, Sonic Origins release date to be revealed soon after ratings and art uh leaked online. Oh, Sonic I remember this. This is the Sonic the Hedgehog. It's the collection of the Genesis games. Yay! Yeah, with uh new features and crap. Sonic the Hedgehog has been in a bit of a resurgence these days. He has another hit film, and the upcoming coming Sonic Frontiers looks promising. But what uh, has been lost in conversation, though, is Sonic Origins. Announced almost a year ago, the compilation brings together Sonic 1, 2, 3, uh, and Knuckles and Sonic CD. Uh, there, uh, there has been almost no news on the game since its initial reveal. However, Origins was recently raided in South Korea. In addition... The title has had some promotional art leaked. A Sonic Origins release date announcement could be right around the corner. A PC version of Sonic Origins was rated all ages in Korea. Here is the promo art as spotted on the PlayStation Network. And there it is. Hold on. Uh, Flo says, isn't there a site you can check to see how many people have achieved a certain trophy? Uh, I believe uh, it is PSN profiles and every... Trophy is ultra rare. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Uncommon. Very rare. Very rare. Uncommon. Uh, there are no... There are no common trophies. <laughs> well, who sets the, the commonality of the trophies? Is that the developers, or is that based on how many people have gotten the trophy? I just assumed it's how many people have gotten it. Cause I always wonder that. I uh, yeah, I don't know how else you could tell like, like how, the percentage yeah. of people who have gotten certain trophies. Uh, the chosen because, like, one got yeah. every other trophy. That is what one point twenty six percent. Because, uh, what was I gonna say? Because if if it's based on like how many people have played the game, then yeah, all the Odd World game, all the Odd World trophies are gonna be uncommon because it's an uncommon game to play. Whereas something like Spider Man. Which is apparently the most platinum game in PlayStation Trophy history. Yeah, those are going to be much more common because everybody's played that game and everybody's tried to platinum that game. I I'm assuming that this is of people who have played the game. Right. Oh, here we go. One common trophy. Uh, end a level with positive Quarma. Okay. So that could uh, be like, you know, the beginning of the game. <laughs> I'm trying to see what the trophy is for just beating the game. Complete every level without Abe dying. Achieve every badge in the game. Uh, 1.36%. Game okay. Master Gold. Achieve three quarters of the different badges across the whole game. 1.82%. Gameplay Master... Oh, Bronze. Uh, five point fifty nine percent. I'd assume that's probably like beating the game. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to Sonic. Uh, yeah. So I guess this is the promotional art. That's the promotional art. That'll probably also be like the box art for like the physical version. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I like it. it looks very, very classic. Uh, it's got Amy. It's got Metal Sonic. 
We've got everybody. We've got everybody from the game. Uh, with Cla- these two classic airbrush look. Yeah, the, and that's the Japanese style specifically. Oh, because the Americans, the American Sonic the Hedgehog is actually different from this era. If you ever look okay. at the character models side by side. Uh, with these two pieces of information, it looks highly likely that Sonic Origins will receive a 2022 release date, along with the aforementioned Sonic Frontiers. The collection itself is quite interesting, as it is being ported using the Retro Engine, which was used on the mobile ports of some Sonic games. This means the games will not feature emulation and will run natively. Expect tweaks, Whoa. like being able to play the games in 16x9 widescreen. Uh, that better be... Uh... Just more screen real estate and not stretch. Well, yeah. Have you ever played the the iPhone version of Sonic? Yes. One and two? Yes. Yeah. It's exactly that. They are great. So, and they're going to they're going to do the same thing with Sonic uh, Sonic Three and Knuckles, which never got iOS ports. Um, I pulled up a picture of a uh, Sonic's Japanese versus the American designs from back yeah. in the day. Uh, Japan got it way better. Yeah. We got like the edgy, like the weird edgy, like looking Sonic, but yeah, he's and it's so weird because like American Sonic was our Sonic, but I look at him now and it's like this, this is wrong. Yeah, no, he <laughs> he doesn't wrong. look right. It looks like yeah. weirdly deformed. Yeah, compared to like the nice, clean looking Japanese Sonic. Yeah, and then I don't know what this is. Japan, America, Europe, and <laughs> Europe looks like all all <laughs> fucked up. Do you ever see the European box art for Sonic 3? Because it is bizarre. Uh, no. I'm lo- yeah. pulling it up right now. Whoa! Yeah. This thing? <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Knuckles just smushed in the corner down there. <laughs> Sonic's got like it's a so- like a human hand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, like it's it takes like up more than his body. This and this. <laughs> It looks like his he doesn't have an arm and his his hand yeah. is his whole arm. Yeah. It looks like he's wearing a foam finger. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's not good. The logo's sick though. The Sonic 3 logo. That's kind of yeah, sick. Yeah, no, that that's a good, that's good yeah. And it's freaking uh uh the the circus world. The circus level. Yeah. That's weird cuz that's the worst level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird to lead with the worst one. Okay, so what's the yeah. release date? Uh, no official release date, but it every according to the fact that it got rated and the fact that uh the promotional art was found on the PlayStation Network, it looks like it's coming out this year. Okay, so uh, twenty which is good release because date. they haven't said anything since they announced it. Uh, they're speculating it's going to be with Sonic Frontiers, which uh would yeah. make a little bit of sense. That's great because I am excited for this because it's like the best versions of these games. Yeah, I don't know if we know about the music for Sonic Three though. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about that. So Sonic I Three know has wa- Sonic Three Go has ahead. not been re released uh, in a very 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 long time. Yeah, I know Christian Whitehead did a prototype of Sonic Three. <sighs> On iOS, he had the game up and running, and in his dev document, he said that he was able to replace any of the music in Sonic 3 that sounded too much like Michael Jackson music with music from the PC port of Sonic 3 from like 98, right. which is completely different music. So, I mean, I hope they keep the original soundtrack because that was fucking fantastic, but they have they have a replacement if necessary. I'd imagine it's one of those situations where they're like, uh, I mean, we want the original, but I don't know if we can. Like, they're gonna roll we'll try, yeah. and then it just gets stuck in limbo forever. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we got so much more Sonic news, guys. Yeah. There's a new 3D open world Sonic game, and it's in Roblox. God Sega. damn it. Mega has teamed up with Roblox developers GameFam to launch Sonic Speed Simulator, a new 3D Sonic game available inside Roblox. The game is in a paid closed beta stage right now, uh, but if you w- if you can wait a few days, it'll be free to play starting this weekend on Saturday, April 16th at 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific or 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, which means it's available now. 
And here you can see the trailer. Uh, Sonic Speed Simulator is the fastest game in Roblox and features everyone's favorite speedster, Sonic the Hedgehog, reads the official synopsis. The game lets you zip around various worlds and through classic Sonic loops and obstacles solo or with a friend to earn rewards, including different Sonic character skins and pets to increase your stats. Likewise, if, Rob if Roblox players manage to rack up uh, 10,000 likes for Sonic Speed Simulator, they'll unlock an exclusive Sonic the Hedgehog skin for their avatar. We've worked closely with Sega to create an official Sonic the Hedgehog experience on Roblox uh, that will authentically delight the hundreds of millions of Blue Blur fa fans across the world. As GameFam CEO Joe uh, Fernekes uh, we're proud that Sega entrusted our talented team of creators to bring Sonic to the metaverse uh, and deliver <laughs> the highest velocity and probably the best looking game in Roblox history. Sonic fans eagerly are waiting another 3D Sonic game can check out Sonic Speed Simulator and Roblox on PC, tablet, mobile device, or, and on Xbox consoles by downloading the Roblox app. Uh, this I'm not going to lie, like this a, looks very good. Yeah, it looks just like a whole ass Sonic game. Yeah. So, so Roblox development, I've, uh, I don't know anything about Roblox. I, 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 I do know yeah, that I, they have some crazy like development tools. Yeah. Like there, there's and th there's people who develop specifically in Roblox, and like that's their career. Yeah. Uh, so I guess Sonic tried to, or Sega tried to, <laughs> you know, capitalize on that, and uh, they. Yeah let them put Sonic in there, which is pretty freaking awesome. They teamed up with, yeah. uh, they didn't team up with Roblox. They teamed up with a Roblox developer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of crazy because, uh, people do, there's a lot of copyright infringement in Roblox. Oh yeah. And, and Sega just kind of like, fuck it. <laughs> we'll just, instead, instead of trying to fight it, we'll just roll with it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's been Sega for a long time. I mean, they got, you know, the guy who used to do Sonic, you know, emulations illegally, he'd be like, hey, you want to make a Sonic game? I hope that it pays so, off for them because it's way more awesome than than, than trying to uh, penalize your fans. Just yes. give them just give them what they want and try to try to uh, profit off of that. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, man, I guess I'm really gonna have to download fucking Roblox and play this <laughs> stupid game because it looks good. I it feel looks like, like all those fan mods that like people have made trying to like prototype a 3D Sonic. I feel like it's going to be very difficult to download Roblox and play that game. Yeah, it, I, it, if you know I Roblox, went, I'm sure it'll be easy. But if if you if you're us and in your 30s trying I, to play the game, I clicked some link to like the Roblox marketplace, and there was just like a hundred different Sonic games. None of them were this. Yeah. That's why it's bizarre that Sega would be like, sure, this one can yeah. use ours and we'll just pretend like the other ones don't exist. Yeah. Anyway. So, but that's, that's fun. Hey, that is fun. Do you think this is like a taste of what like Frontiers would be? Like this style? I really hope that they, that's why they that, did that. I really hope that they uh, adapt that style. Because this is, like you said, it's the style that all the Sonic fan games are trying to adapt. Yeah. Uh so I hope that uh I hope that they go with it. I hope that uh Sonic Frontiers does something similar. I I really hope yeah. they don't fuck that up. I I I have I, know. I I think there's a lot of potential for a Sonic game like Frontiers, but I think that there's also a lot of potential for them to fuck it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Though no, you should 100% be cautious about Sonic Frontiers. Spoopy Girl with 500 bits. Bits for the boys and to celebrate internet just back after 15-hour spectrum outage. Oh, my good Lord. Oh, wow. That's another problem we got in this country. We've got bad yep. ISPs. Bad, bad internet. Very bad. Um, anyway, one just one last. If you are sick of hearing about Sonic, too bad. We got one more for you. <laughs> uh, Sonic or Sega? Oh, it's Sega. <laughs> Sega, yes. What's the difference, really? But it's not It's not Sonic-related, though. It's other Sega sure. games. Sega Sammy Holdings is developing a big-budget reboots of its Dreamcast games, Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio. 
as it taps its back catalog in a search of global hits like Epic Games' uh, Fortnite, according to people familiar with the plans. The two titles would be the first uh, entries in Sega's Super Game Initiative, which the company announced a year ago as an effort to develop reoccurring revenue sources and build online communities around its software portfolio. Fortnite has become a role model for such games, free-to-play, available cross-platform, host large multiplayer contests and include extras like vehicles, construction, and social events on top of the usual combat, spurring players, uh, spurring player purchases of in-game items. The new Crazy Taxi has already been in development for over a year, and the Tokyo-based entertainment group uh, aims to release it within the next two to three years, uh, the people said, asking not to be named as the information is not yet public. It... it uh, it names alongside Jet Set Radio in Sega's annual report a year ago on a list of intellectual property assets that Sega wanted to uh, recapitalize on uh, by bringing them up to date. Both new games are in early stages of creation and could still be canceled, the people said. <laughs> Sega spokesperson uh, said the company has no comment uh, to make at this time. The Super Game Project is led by Sega's video game unit chief, um, Suji uh, Yudsa. Uh, Yatsumi, a former PlayStation executive, and currently includes plans uh, for about four such titles, according to the people. The company said last year that its European studio is working on a first-person shooter super game, and the plan was to offer content and services that can create a larger community and as much revenue as 100 billion yen or $78 million in lifetime revenue. Uh, Sega's online role-playing game Fantasy Star Online 2 fits this criteria for a global multiplayer hit, but it has so far failed to stir up a thriving market with its in-game purchasing offers. Oh, really? uh, Japan, The Japanese company play, uh, plans to address this aspect of monetization more aggressively in its upcoming titles. Crazy Taxi, uh, Crazy Taxi casts the players in the role of a high-speed... Uh, a high speed above all else taxi driver and jet set radio is an award-winning uh, street action game both released on the play on the dreamcast in 2000 past the psalm never turned into major commercial hits but did develop a devoted fan base even as niche titles uh i don't understand uh what they're saying is a super game uh is it a platform or is it not it's Fortnite, basically. It's it's a game that has broad multiplayer appeal where uh, characters can customize their avatars and purchase in-game items to further customize their avatars. And they compete in, like, head-to-head -head competition and co-op gameplay and things so, like so, that. So that is what... Yes, they are saying, like, Fortnite. That yes. is not... Fortnite. Fortnite has like community made game modes and shit. Like Fortnite is a platform. I don't see how you can take Crazy Taxi and turn it into that level of a super game, you know? Like Crazy I, Taxi, you're going to fucking play Crazy Taxi and then there's going to be like, you know, like challenges and stuff and in-game like items yeah, you can I'd, earn or buy. Yeah. But that's not fucking Fortnite. That's more like I Valorant or something. Yeah, Crazy Taxi is not like a mass multiplayer type of game. It can have right. multiplayer, but like, you know, 30 people r racing through the streets of San Francisco trying to pick up fares, I don't think is the type of, is going to lead to the type of gameplay experience Sega thinks it's going to lead to. Yeah, same thing with Jet uh... Set Radio, maybe, but <laughs> no. even then. It, 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 I also don't have any faith in sega putting that much effort into a game like at all like that like that much uh uh i don't see sega putting effort into a game to make it last a, lo a long time like uh especially yeah. if they have trouble with fantasy star because i thought that game was doing good i didn't know that it, it's th it doing had well but uh, the uh their in-game marketplace is uh hasn't been what they want it to be and that's the big thing because that's where like all these games like fortnite want to make their revenue from the in-game marketplace right so th they're looking that's what they're really looking for is a game that people can play forever and can s support through in-app purchases
I think there's a lot of great potential for a crazy taxi and jet grind radio, but uh, yeah, this seems weird. Also, it. <laughs> did this article have a note? Uh, there's one article that I saw mentioned NFTs. So, so, uh, so this article did not, but yeah, part of the Super Games Initiative was also looking into of uh, how NFTs can uh, be implemented into these games, which Sega said they wouldn't do. They said they're not going to do NFTs. I think Sega of America said they weren't going to do, but Sega of Japan never said that. <laughs> Uh, true, true. Uh, we got, I wanted to read some people in chat. Now I'm, no, no, I, I lost them. You people, you people say too many things. Oh, uh, M. Andrew says, right. You play five minutes of crazy taxi and then you go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, is Luke real says, does anybody remember the crazy taxi mobile game? I remember. Were you at E3 that year when uh, we were in an Uber? And it was PAX, and I was oh, at was that. Oh, it was PAX? Yeah. We were in an Uber, and we were telling the guy, the guy was talking to us, we were like, yeah, we were at a video game convention. And he, he's like, they should make a video game about Uber driving. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you pick up people, and then you drop them off at the destination. You like earn points and stuff. And I was like, that there is a game. It's called Crazy Taxi. And he's like, Crazy yeah. Taxi? What's that? And I was like, you can get it on your phone, I think. And while he's driving the car, he goes into the Google Play Store on his phone and he downloads Crazy Taxi. Yep. All right. So this is an interview with um, Suji uh, Yatsumi about the Super Games Initiative. According to him, uh, there will be AAA titles that cross over Sega's comprehensive range of technologies and will be part of a bigger five-year plan. Uh, So the idea of it, that sentence sounds fine. Take Sega's back catalog and mine it to make new big-budget AAA titles. Uh, And then he says... Uh, several titles are being developed under this framework through which each title may be very different from another. He did explain that all of them will be uh, interactive titles that go beyond the traditional framework of games. <laughs> okay. And that uh, f- includes... Uh, oh, here we go. And yes, it seems that some of these super games could feature NFTs as Sega producer uh, Masayoshi uh Kikuchi explained during one part of the interview gaming history has a hist- gaming has a history of expansion through the connection of various cultures and technologies for example social networking and game uh game video viewing are recent examples it is a natural extension for the future of gaming that will that will expand to involve a new area such as cloud gaming and NFTs we are also developing super games from the perspective of how far game how far different games can be connected to each other we're going to make a game, but it's not going to be a game. It's going to be more than a game. That's usually yeah. the start of a pitch that makes me walk away <laughs> or click out or do something else. <laughs> I feel like part of me, maybe it's just because I'm a naive idiot, but part of me wants to believe that Sega doesn't know what NFTs are and right. just said that because they know it's a new technology that other game developers are talking about. I mean, we Doesn't shit on necessarily mean that they're going to put it. Put we it in shit there. on NFTs all the time. Yes, because uh, they they are bad and stupid, and you should th- not. So they, see, I don't see a world where it makes sense. But more and more people are picking it up for whatever reason, and part of me feels like it's just like we're old, and like the younger mm-hmm. generation sees something that we don't. But like, what is the thing? Because I keep looking into it and it keeps, everything I keep turning up is just nonsense. Things that we've already had. It's not even the younger generation. It's dudes our age and a little bit older who are like starting this and a part of this. It's not, it's not. No, but I'm I'm seeing uh, more people of the younger generation are are on board with it maybe it's because they're young and stupid (laughs) 
that's but gotta be it. They don't. But yeah. the the pioneers are the people who are our age, who are who want yeah. to exploit the the stupid people. So, yeah. I don't know. It's kind it's kind of weird and scary the way the way it's working out. And I feel like they're here to stay, even though well, they don't make any fucking sense. It, it, well, it doesn't make. Sheer, they, they can't possibly be profitable for anybody. Through sheer perseverance, they've become normalized. Right. Because right. you know. I mean, you look at you shit like the Board Eight Yacht Club and stuff. Like those are like the independent NFT grifters and whatnot. But the mm -hmm. fact that you have like major companies like Sega and Ubisoft, and I got an email last week about DC Comics NFTs. Just, just like the fact that major major companies are like dipping their toes into this and offering their own versions of it. The fact that it's become so normalized. That's they, they probably were... what is like, you know, attracting younger people into it because they don't know. They, they were giving one away for the for seeing Batman on the first week or something. Yeah. Uh, Ma Masta Boog in the chat says NFTs are new age farts in a jar. <laughs> um, like when Beeple like came out with his NFTs back in the, like the start of the whole movement. Like I was like, all right, good for him. He's an artist that found found a way to make money off of it. And yeah. then right after that, people saw how much money they could make in the NFT market, and they just started fucking going wild with it. And at first, yeah. it was just for artists to make a like digital artists to make money, because you know back you know like I would buy prints from artists and stuff, but like these days it's harder to do that because uh, you could just look at it on your on your phone and then go, okay, cool, here's a like, and then that's the end of that. But now you can own yeah. a piece of it, and that's pretty cool. But um. It all it immediately got picked up by people who just wanted to turn a quick buck and and it got ruined. And even like even then, like the that initial concept of like you owning a piece of digital art, I don't necessarily think that's entirely true. It's it was like their unique spin on offering on a, there was their unique spin on a new way to offer JPEGs in a way. Yeah. Because, because the whole thing was started by like crypto bros who were looking for like the next step in uh cryptocurrency. And this was it. Yeah. Um I mean it, it it makes sense to want something so that digital artists can sell their work and 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 turn the same type of profit that a physical artist could. Mm -hmm. Um but there's a lot of flaws in the model that are easily exploited and have been already by, you know, corporate elite types. Like the whole idea of crypto is to be free and open f so anybody could invest and make money. And, 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 uh, yeah. And so we don't need like the government to handle our currency and whatever. But it ends because of all of the flaws in the way that it works, it's now just the super rich people who profit <laughs> yeah it's it it's they, they didn't fix anything they just shifted all the problems in a different direction yeah exactly oh exactly. uh, yeah in, in, in the exact opposite direction that they set out to fix in the first place yeah uh you have to leave and come back you're frozen oh crap all right goodbye Ugh, I'm going to do NFTs of physical games, a screenshot of my physical games for $1. All right, Felipe is giving away his physical games for $1, everybody. Um, oh, we don't have this as as, a, as an Here article. We Hi. We don't have this as an article, but WADA is, is going to start grading uh, physical games. I, I'm sorry. WADA is going to start grading uh, modern physical games, like Switch games and Xbox games and stuff. I... I should have, I, I apologize. No, there was something more interesting than that. There was a Reddit post from a lawyer saying he was trying to build a class action lawsuit against WADA. Oh. oh That's, fuck. I, we need that. I, <laughs> uh, let me try to find that. All right, well, while you find that, I'm going to look at uh, the status of Kojima Productions. So is this about his tweet? Yeah, this is about his tweet. I'm just going to read yeah. his tweet. Uh, I'm not going to read right. the whole article. So Kojima posted this picture of the uh, it's it's like a it's like a banner image that says uh, PlayStation Studios and it's all the PlayStation Studio games and you'll see all the way on the left is Norman Reedus from Death Stranding uh, as one of the PlayStation Studio games. Then 
Kojima quote tweeted it and said, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding, but Kojima Productions has been and all will continue to be an independent studio. Uh, which is kind of confusing because then why is he in yeah. the banner? I think, isn't Death Stranding a... Because Sony did produce that game and it is a PlayStation right. exclusive. Right. So it stands to reason that maybe Death Stranding is a PlayStation game or a PlayStation Studios game. But Kojima Productions as a whole is not a PlayStation Studio company. Yeah, so it seemed like a second party thing or something or one of those yeah. jobbies. Yeah. So uh but also, I mean that game is out on PC now and I think yeah. well it's not on play it's not on Xbox though. No. Well, well, anyway, uh, while some ex have accepted Kojima at his word, others point out that Bluepoint was forced to make a similar statement after, ironically enough, it too had its Sony acquisition leaked by an image. Oh, so people are saying oh, that Kojima right. might be might be yeah. adopted by by PlayStation, and it still doesn't explain why Sam Bridges is now tucked onto the end of PlayStation Studios' shiny new banner image. So watch this space, I guess. I suspect that this won't be the last time we'll be reporting on this story. PlayStation has recently gone on a spending spree, acquiring studios such as Housemark, Bluepoint. Fire Sprite, Nix's, Valkyrie, Jade Raymond's Haven, and of course, Destiny Maker Bungie. Forgot about the Bungie acquisition. Yeah. So it's possible they might just straight up buy Kojima Productions, but uh Yeah. Maybe they're in talks and they they jump the gun a little bit. Uh I, I mean I don't I mean I don't see why they wouldn't want Kojima and I don't see why Kojima wouldn't want to work with them. He's been working with PlayStation it, for It does for many make years. the most sense. Isn't uh isn't Co uh, Kojima Productions though working on an Xbox game right now, or did I make that up? No, I think not you're like right. an exclusive, but like like they had talks with Microsoft and they're going to bring some games to. I Re could I could be making that. Remember up. when Kojima left Konami and he went on his world tour? I'd imagine yes. that Kojima, if he's looking to be bought out, he's probably got the lay of the land. He's probably shopping around to everybody. Yeah, you know. Um. But I mean, it's also possible that he wants some freedom and he just wants, like, uh, I'm sure PlayStation would be more than happy to be like, hey, Kojima, you working on a new game? Here's all the money you want. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he doesn't have to get bought. He could just pretty much do whatever he wants. Anyway, uh, did you happen to find right. the thing? I did. Let me, I'll put it at the top of the keep. Okay. There we go. Okay. Potential class action lawsuit against uh, Wada Games. Why are you? Oh, uh, here we are. Uh, hello, I am a I am an attorney, a game collector, and a longtime community member. My law firm is presently preparing a class action case to be filed against Collectors Universe and Wada Games Inc. in U.S. D.C. Federal Court in California. If anyone would like to join the case, uh, would like to join the class as a named plaintiff. Please send me a message and we can go from there. In order to be a named plaintiff, uh, you would have to have had sent a game in for grading with Wada Games Inc. within the last two years and not receive it back in the window estimated oh. by Wada Games. Oh, no. Uh, you do not have to reside in California to participate as the case will be filed in federal court and we will be attempting to certify a nationwide case. While the complaint is not yet finalized, I can offer an overview of the issues. The claims intended uh, the claims intended include unfair business practices, RICO violations, and fraud claims. Specifically, the complaint addresses the statement on the company's website involving false estimates, uh, turnaround false estimated turnaround times, the fact that paying that paying increased fees does not actually result in a different service level and the market manipulation allegations that were more fully addressed in the Carl Jops YouTube video and the Seth a uh, Abramson's article. This post is intended as a public comment, not as a solicitation. Uh, okay, so is this focused on the whole, like not getting the game back in a certain window? Like if you send it off for grading or is this focused on them specifically manipulating the market? It, it sounds like the primary thing is 
not getting your game back. Uh, the manipulation of the market appears to be like a secondary uh, oh, well, part of the, this. Game. That's the biggest deal. Though. That's the major <laughs> one. Yeah, but that's kind of well, needs to be fixed immediately. <laughs> this this could be like they're like Al Capone went to jail for tax evasion. True. Not for true. all the other actual crime shit he did. That's so. True. Not getting your games back in the time that WADA claims, even though, like, because that's on their website. That's mm -hmm. what they're advertising. is like, you will get your game back in a certain amount of time. You can even pay to get it back faster. So if they can, like, immediately go after them for that, and then the secondary reasoning could be the market manipulation. Right, right. But the, if they can punish WADA for false advertising... They could probably deal a lot of damage to make up for the market manipulation. So, if you people think we're speaking another language right now, uh, Wada Games is the is the company that you send your retro games to, and they will grade it for it, give you a grading. Uh, we've uh, uh, in we've in the past talked about how uh, they purposely grade certain things really high. Uh, to then sell on affiliated websites for astronomical prices in order to inflate the 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 price of of it's 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 basically money laundering. They're they're money laundering. Yeah. Uh, here's a tweet from them. This was f from April fifteenth. This was from Friday. So this was a while ago. Oh wow! And I only just saw it today. Um. WADA announces modern grading. We will be officially launching our modern grading services soon, which will include seventh generation on video games. The eligible consoles for modern grading being added to our current services will include PlayStation 3, Nintendo DS, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox Series X. Uh, I don't know why 3DS isn't there. Um <laughs> Maybe they don't know that 3DS is different than DS. <laughs> yeah. Also weird that PlayStation 3 is there and not Xbox 360. True. Uh, again, maybe they don't know that <laughs> they're the same generation. Yeah. And then here's this. Pop Report News. Check out the newest wave of static Pop Reports just set live. Pop Reports have arrived. We released our NES Pop Report. I don't know what a Pop Report is. Include in the release are sealed games for the following systems. We can't wait to bring you information and just... Okay, so I don't understand. Oh, pop! that's a population report. Oh, so just how many of certain games are graded? Yeah. Like somebody posted a screenshot. Star Trek The Next Generation at a 9.6. Uh... Interesting. Uh, oh, Disney's Aladdin assembled in Mexico Majesco release 9.8. Interesting. Okay. Uh, can we see these games? <laughs> so, so WADA has also been caught uh, rating things really high that definitely shouldn't be rated high. You can like see like yeah. physical creasing in the boxes and stuff. Uh, because they're manipulating the market. Uh, M. Andrew says, I think I heard Bomberman 64's second attack was possibly a victim of theirs. Would explain the insane secondhand prices now. I mean, everything's been inflated to shit. Partly because of COVID, but also because of these assholes. Yeah. Uh, a population report is essentially an accounting of, this is for baseball cards, uh, accounting of the cards the companies have graded. Uh, it allows you to see how many, say, Cy Young cards one of uh, uh, one of them has graded. Even beyond that, population reports also detail how many cards in particular condition have been graded. So it's the amount of stuff they've got uh, of one particular game they've gotten in, what they've graded, and how they've graded it. So that would this was a big deal because they weren't releasing that for a very long time. Oh, good. Well, I'm sure that all the backlash has made them release that. Um, yeah, but and and obviously that affects what uh the, the what the price of a certain thing's going to be. If there's going to be a lot of nine point eights of Aladdin, then that game's not going to be worth that yeah. much. Um, 
But I mean, the last couple of games that have been the best or the highest selling retro game of all time, the last couple of them were incredibly popular games. Um, yeah. They might not have been popular in that they were 9.8s, but I don't think any of them should have been 9.8s, to be yeah. honest with you. So just because it's on the chart doesn't mean it's legit. They could still be manipulating yeah. it in other ways. Um, anyway. That's all we got on water, right? Yeah. There's a company I hope goes out of business. Yeah. What was the other rating website? I want to support them as much as possible. Oh, yeah. And they were actually around longer than WADA. Yeah. WADA popped up seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, f- no... No. VGA says M. Andrew. I think I think it was video game authority. I think that's right. Yeah, VGA video game authority. I thought I saw it with an H or something. No grade. An investigation into the video game authority. Uh oh, are they bad too? Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, action figure authority. Yeah, are it's they, like their uh, sister company. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'll have to read that later. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, uh, more news. Let's okay. talk about The Witcher 3. Uh, we, you know how much we love playing, it. Don't count on playing The Witcher 3's next-gen update in the near future. CD Projekt Red has delayed the free update Uh the free upgrades release until further notice after deciding to finish the project with an internal development team instead of Saber Interactive. The company wants to evaluate the necessary scope of work, according to a statement. The Wild Hunt update was originally slated to arrive in the second quarter of this year, uh, before the end of June. It would refresh the 2015 game for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC, with ray tracing, uh, faster loading times, and possibly other features taking advantage of modern hardware. This would be a complete addition with expansions and other content, including material inspired by the Netflix series. Uh, It's not certain what prompted the decision to drop the outside studio. This isn't necessarily an attempt to avoid a repeat of Cyberpunk 2077's buggy launch. However, it wouldn't be surprising if CD Projekt Red exercises caution. This will be the last Witcher release until the new title based on Unreal Engine 5, uh, a polished experience will uh, will make sure games have a fi- the games have a favorable opinion of the series by the time the new series uh, the new follow up arrives. So I saw somewhere else that part of the reason why they are doing this internally is because the Saber Interactive studio that was developing the Wild Hunt upgrade was Russian. And CD Projekt Red has has been very vocal about pulling uh, their support of Russian studios until the war in Ukraine is over. Interesting. So I think that's a I think that's a big part of it. That being said, that that's very admirable of them. But by by all accounts, CD Projekt Red is a shit show right now. (laughs) So like pulling it internally to get it done when Cyberpunk still has a lot of work to be done, even though a lot of work's been done on it already. And you're starting Witcher four with a brand new engine. We're not going to see this upgrade anytime soon. I mean, it makes at all. Yeah. It makes sense why they would suspend it indefinitely. This is the least important thing that they're doing right now. <laughs> they, they, mm-hmm. We don't need a, a next gen version of the Witcher three. Maybe they're doing it as part of the development for Witcher four. Like this is like a test. Well, it's Witcher four is going to be a whole new engine. So I don't True. know why they would test it off in an old engine. I feel like, if anything, this is just marketing for Witcher 4. True. You know, get polishing it up with a free upgrade for next-gen systems. You know, that that's good marketing for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel bad for uh, CD Projekt. Uh, it's it's whatever they release next is gonna it, it's gonna have a lot of eyeballs on it. People are yeah. going to criticize the hell out of it. Like, uh, like honestly, if Witcher 4 is not the best game of all time, like, they're pro- they're boned. Yeah, they got to put a lot of work into that. Yeah. They got to polish the hell out of that. 
Um, well, I mean, who is anybody really clamoring for a next gen port of The Witcher Three? Game's been out for so long. It's been on PC for so long. It works just fine. <laughs> I don't know. Which is one of those games that like, it's like 300 hours, but like people keep playing it. Mm -hmm. It's it's like Skyrim or Breath of the Wild. Like that's a game like everybody just goes back to, regardless of whether or not you beat it. True. Uh, I I was looking up video game authority. Yeah. Uh, and I found this article or oh, it's a reddit post from 11 years ago is the Jeez. video game authority a joke or are they just ahead of the game uh you can grade currency sports cards and other items when these items are graded it is commonly accepted and usually desired to have items that are graded higher their speculated organiz there's their respected organizations that I think that's the most important thing to take into consideration. The only thing I get out of the VGA is that they aid in the price gouging unintentionally question mark. Again, this is from 11 years ago. Yeah. For items that shouldn't be worth anywhere near what people ask for on eBay. As far as I know, there isn't a brick and mortar store in existence that actively sells VGA graded items as a legitimate product, nor is there an active collector's market for these items. Have you met anyone who collects or actively uses VGA for grading purposes? Maybe my suggestions are premature and we still need to let the game collecting market come into its own. And these game these guys are just ahead of the curve. Remember those those days when you could just go to a retro <laughs> game store and pick up a copy of Mario Brothers for five bucks. <laughs> yep. Good times. And, and and we were we we thought we thought we had it all. <laughs> yeah. Now you go into a retro game store, you see the original Mario Brothers and they're like, fifty bucks, please give me. Yeah. And you could eat my ass for that. Mm, please, please do. Uh, anyway, let's plow through some more news. Speaking of eating okay. ass, let's plow through some more news. <laughs> this is now the second Wolf Den podcast where we've talked about eating ass. Yeah. It's, it's your dad. Anyway, Ninja Cowabunga, Turtles. Cowabunga, dude. Yeah. Getting a physical collector's edition that is $150 fucking dollars. Uh, and you're going to get it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. This is way... Like, this collector's edition is cool. I like the stuff that comes with it. I am not spending $150 on a on a game like this. This is this is a digital download to my Switch. That's it. Not worth a, not worth a physical edition, let alone $150 physical edition. M. Andrew in the chat uh, says, Oh, yeah, pizza time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so the collector's edition of the Cowabunga collection includes a physical copy of the game, a 16 by 24 cloth poster, a 4 by uh, 4.5 by 5 inch layered acrylic diorama, five enamel pins, 12 translucent trading cards, and a 5.5 by 8 inch 180 page art book with a chapter dedicated to each of the 13 games in the compilation. Oh, that's fucking cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's got all new artwork from Kevin Eastman, like including his interpretation of the Turtles in Time artwork. Uh, yeah, it's it's got cool stuff. This is not a hundred and fifty dollars cool. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I only want the art book, and it's not a hundred and fifty dollars cool. Yeah, I would say if you if you want to get this physically, stick with the forty dollar regular ass version. Or hang around GameStop for a little bit because, like, unsold collector's editions drop to, like, standard retail price all the time. You might get lucky and get yourself this for 40 bucks. Uh, Yeah, that's only if it's not, like, heavily sought after. Right. Well, now everything is heavily sought after. True. Buy it, keep it in the box, send it to VGA. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Willow Davis says, "Would you say you were shell shocked at the price?" Yeah. Uh, oh, shell shock. <laughs> so I mean, that's really. I really just want the freaking art book. If they sell that separately, yeah. I would get that in a heartbeat. But and that's a, what a hundred and how many pages? Uh, hundred eighty pages. 
Yeah. With all 13 all, games. All 13 games. That's freaking awesome. But uh yeah, I'm not uh I'm not spending 150 bucks on that. I don't even like getting physical games. So this yeah. is a digital ass purchase if I ever done seen one. Oh, a hundred percent. Um anyway. Uh moving on to more news about John Wick. Yes. No, about the John uh, Wick creator. A Streets of Rage movie adaptation is in the works from John Wick franchise creator uh, Derek Kolstad. According to a report from Deadline, Kolstad reportedly wrote the film script. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog producer DG, DJ2 Entertainment and Escape Artists uh, will produce the adaptation. Uh, Streets of Rage began uh, back in 1991. It saw its long-awaited uh, sequel, Streets of Rage 4, come out in 2020. It is a side-scrolling beat-em-up series originated on the Sega Genesis, uh, centered around ex-police fighting a crime syndicate. It is a favorite game series of mine. I do not think this will make a good movie at all. Uh, <laughs> There's just no said, story. I am all in on this. <laughs> oh my god! So what's this the, is, what? What did I, this guy do? He I, did he write John Wick? He wrote John Wick. He wrote I all the John Wicks. I feel like that doesn't matter. I feel like writing John Wick doesn't matter. I feel like the direction and Keanu Reeves himself is what made that movie. I feel like I feel like it, the story was does it didn't matter at all. Well, the story, the story was very basic. Yes, but there. But one of the brilliant things about John Wick was it it, it built in this lore to it. Yeah that you didn't realize was there until like you go back and you start to see like oh the, the gold coins mean something the tattoos mean something there's the, all these rules for this hotel why are there rules for this hotel and it's yeah, totally the, the, the world building yes, but i feel like i feel like a lot building. of that world building was visual well yeah but like he still has to write that down in the script that has to come from somewhere the action right. scenes and like the general direction of it yes it's 100 percent keanu and the directors but you know i feel i feel like you know Colstad does deserve some monochrome of credit for the general world building and just the general idea of what the john Riff, john wick franchise is sure. i don't necessarily think that will translate to streets of rage right yeah exactly i i don't yeah i don't i don't yeah i have i have zero faith in this i don't don't think streets of rage is the type of franchise that you could do something like this with especially because streets of rage like that's a series that's built entirely around its action like the only way this will work is if they get a director of the same level as you know the two guys who directed John Wick, and then you know f- continue with the series. So if if they don't if they don't get someone like that, if they just get some guy who, who directs like episodes of uh you know fucking Parks and Rec, <laughs> then I don't necessarily think this is you know this is gonna work. Um, Cosmic Omelet says I love the movie The Warriors. It would be cool if we could get a '90s setting. <laughs> Lots of neon colors, badass fight scenes, and a CGI kangaroo beating the shit out of at least one dude. Yeah. It's another thing, too. Everyone, like, most beat-em-ups are just the warriors. And if if you do not do enough to differentiate yourself, people are going to watch this and go, that's the warriors. I could just watch the warriors. Fun fact, my mom thinks that I live in the warriors every day of my life. Yes. She well, that's what New York is like. Well, I mean, I hope she, I know I I want her to see the Batman, but I know if she sees it, she's going to think that you know, you're just a block that I just away from walk outside and it's that their masks. Yeah. I walk outside and there's just people having brunch, you know, on the side like, you know, like it's <laughs> it's like restaurants and shit. Like I don't know what she thinks yeah. is going on around here. Uh there's people on the streets being being like, so I was thinking of investing in Netflix, but then I heard that maybe it wasn't such a good idea. That's what happens when I walk out the door. <laughs> Netflix might finally introduce an 
ad supported tier, which if they do, I might switch to that because I am fucking sick of paying $16 <laughs> a month for Netflix. My, my roommate the other day tried to get me to invest in Netflix. He's like, yeah, you got to invest in Netflix because they're having an earnings call soon and they're going to announce, you know, everybody's going to want to buy it after that. And I was like, why would everybody want to buy it after that? They just, there's rumors that they're going to start charging people for sharing accounts. Why would they do that if they're doing good? Yeah. And then today they had the call and announced that they're doing bad and now their stock plummeted and he yeah. lost a fuck ton of money. And he was on the phone with his dad complaining and I was like, what did I tell you? And his dad was like, they they said that people are sharing accounts and they lost a lot of money. I was like, that's what I said the other day. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, one more thing. We got EB heading. A, a new Star Wars game is in development at Skydance New Media, the interactive studio founded in 2019 by Amy Henning. Of, uh, this was announced on Tuesday by Lucasfilm Games and Skydance. It's a return to the Star Wars franchise for Henning, who had previously worked on the with the franchise at EA's Vis uh, Visceral Games on the ambitious but canceled project set in a galaxy far, far away. Skydance New Media describes its untitled Star Wars project as a richly cinematic action adventure game featuring an original story, but did not reveal specifics. No title, release date, or platforms uh, were announced. So, Amy Henning is doing it again. She's back trying to make a Star Wars game. So we touched on this kind of in a different article today, and I was like, "She's doing a Star Wars game," because <laughs> it, it's it mentioned that she was doing a Star Wars game. But uh, yeah, I think this was rumored also a while ago. Was it? Because like I knew like she started a new studio, but like oh and there, no, there wait, were talks about like it's not. It wasn't rumored. She just worked on a Star Wars game before. <laughs> Yeah, she worked on the Visceral Star Wars game that got canceled. Right, right, right. Wait, didn't she also do a? Uh... She was Uncharted. also no. She, she was. She also worked on a. Uh, uh, freaking uh, Battlefront Two. She worked at Motive. She... Oh, that was Jade Raymond. Oh, I'm thinking of a completely different person. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain that. Yeah, no, Amy Henning was working with uh, Visceral to make the, the, it was called Ragtag. It was like S Star Wars Uncharted mm -hmm. um, that eventually got canceled because they had to use the stupid Frostbite engine to make an Uncharted style game and they could never get it to work. Yeah, that totally blurred together. That and the, and the yeah. yeah. That and the Jade Raven so, stuff yeah. blur blurred completely together for me. Yeah, but this is uh, I like this is part of Lucas's film's uh, new initiative where like other people are now allowed to develop Star Wars games. Thank God, Quantic Dreams, Star Wars Eclipse, uh, Ubisoft's open world Ubisoft Star Wars game, uh, a sequel of Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, Star Wars games are good again. Maybe I hope. I mean, I haven't played one in a while. I feel like uh, I I never played Fallen Order. Um, I didn't play Fallen Rogue Order is very good one or whatever the fuck it was called Rogue something or other oh, Squadrons Squadrons not even Rogue <laughs> I didn't like it <laughs> I didn't like it I know there there's a fan base for it I didn't I didn't think it was all that good apparently Skywalker Saga Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga is fantastic mm -hmm. so I, I might ha things. I might have to just get that all right well now it's time for the thing that we do every week. It's this time. Yeah. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This one's a tweet by Arizona Ice Tea. Yeah, Long Island Zone. Come at us. <laughs> it's, it's like a Dark Souls looking thing. It's like a, a little tiny guy yeah. fighting a giant boss. And Arizona Ice Tea is the giant boss, and the little tiny guy is inflation. I feel like that should be the opposite. Did you see? It should be the other way. Did you way see around. there were there were all those articles about, uh, because the big thing about Arizona IC is they've been selling tall boy cans for ninety nine cents for the past like twenty years. Uh huh. And there was an interview with the CEO of the company. Like, how is this hap? How can you make this happen? This should cost 
you know, three dollars by now. And he talked about like every like every business decision we make is to make sure that that can sells for ninety nine cents no matter what, mm-hmm. because p- the people don't need to be nickel and dime by us. We're just trying to sell them iced tea. And it talks about all the different ways they like try to cut costs. And one of the big things is that they don't spend any money on marketing. Interesting. Like the can itself is like obviously they spend money on marketing, but not like you know it's a poster or it's like a bus ad. It's not fucking Super Bowl ads or sure. giant billboards or like TV commercials or anything like that. So they the don't need it. Say, it's just word yeah. of mouth, and also it's ninety nine cents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nine, a ninety nine cent tall boy can of iced tea is your marketing. Yeah. So. Um. So so the day that I saw this tweet. I had just purchased a bottle of Arizona iced tea from a Walgreens and it was $2.50. Granted, it was like a one liter, I think. So it's like big. So I I actually like the $1 bottles, even though you get less than it can. I just like the bottle better. Um, Yeah. But uh, this was, yeah, I think like a one liter bottle that was $2.50. And there's also, I've seen the $1 cans for sale for like $2 at some places. Some, some, friggin' asshole places like like they yeah. sell the bottle they sell the cans without the 99 cents on it right so i don't know what the deal is with that um but i like arizona iced tea it's great yeah it's fantastic um, i like honest tea a lot but because it's it's like not as sweet but uh yeah it's like it's like three dollars yeah and arizona iced tea is a dollar like how could you friggin' yeah, so you can't compete with that. No, you can't. Anyway, we're going to talk to you guys real quick. So Metascension says, it's a refreshing attitude, much like the tall, refreshing cold can of a delicious Arizona peach iced tea. Will, what is, I the, find that funny. What is the best Arizona iced tea flavor? There's only right. one answer. <laughs> so I'm a basic bitch, and I like the regular Arizona iced tea. But I also like their Arnold Palmer, so... Okay, that was One that was that was cute. Uh, but you're wrong. Okay. I you know I'm gonna I'll go ahead and say it's it's kind of a toss up. I don't know what this is. What is oh, it's just a different bottle. Uh, the best flavor is the blueberry white tea. I don't even like blueberry, but this slaps hard. That just sounds gross. <laughs> oh, it's so good. But also, you know what? I'm I'm, remi- I'm reminding myself of. The plum one. I spelled plum so wrong. How do you spell plum? I I, 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 I left out the L. (laughs) This shit, the Asian plum one also slaps, but this is a rare find. Asian plum might be the best one, but it's a rare find. So second, you know, of the... Common ones, blueberry white tea is pretty good. Give it a shot, everybody. Don't say gross. It's fucking great. <laughs> uh, again, I don't even like blueberry stuff, but it's awesome. I don't know why there's a pear on the bottle of this one. It's just blueberry. I don't know what the pear is doing there. Anyway, now we're talking to you guys. All right. We start with comments left on last week's Wolf Den podcast. As left on over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Chubbs the Owl. <laughs> Hidden hero of this podcast, Will's wife for taking care of the newborn on her birthday so Will can be on the podcast. <laughs> Birthdays don't count when you have kids. It just, it yeah. just doesn't matter. And they, and they really don't. Yeah, it's Will- like, fuck me for being born. What was my problem? The two of them had their birthdays on the same weekend and uh, we couldn't line up our schedules to celebrate it and then Easter happened so your birthday's yeah. just got forgotten about <laughs> yeah <laughs> um wave 99 says so the metaverse is basically just the oasis from ready player one yes it's exactly uh, yes that. actually it's exactly that and probably just as bad uh Gabriel Ramirez says angry boomer yells at metaverse cloud I mean yeah yeah and I'll continue to yell at it because it's it not that it's dumb but it's going to become real dumb real fast 
because the people who are in control of the metaverse are not the people you want to be in control of something like this. The, the This week's podcast, it was angry boomers yell about NFTs. Yeah. Uh, D Lin- and Roblox. <laughs> yeah. D. Linton says, finally opened Kirby ATFL. <laughs> Uh, I forgot the name of this fucking game. Forgotten Land. Kirby and the, and the Forgotten Land. Land. Uh, I like the Aqua look. Teen. Aqua Teen. Fuck your life. Uh, I, look, <laughs> I like the look, but I don't like the move set. Oh, it's so good. Uh, EG Sword is missing up thrust. No, it's not. It has one. You have to jump, though. Um, or slide. I think if you slide and sword, you, you do an up thrust. Uh, down plunge. You, okay, if you jump and hit the sword, you do like a spin attack. It doesn't have a down plunge. Uh, the yeah. ranged attack at full health. No, it has that. It has it. Maybe you have to upgrade the sword, though, in order to get that. Um, everything feels extremely simple so far. I'm in the third instance, so it probably gets more complex. I wish there was a dash, but it has that. <laughs> so dash attacks for a thing. It has it. We'll see if things change a bit. So here's the problem with Kirby and the Forgotten Land. There is a tutorial but the tutorial doesn't tell you everything. So like I was playing the game and people were like, yo, hold R and hit left. And you do that and you do like a dodge roll. And I was like, holy shit, this game has a dodge roll. And then I learned about the dash. And then, yeah, the the, the sword has all of the things that you just talked about. You just got to like figure out how to do it. I think I think the moveset is, is uh, pretty fantastic in Kirby. And I, I can say that. Because I've been playing the whole game as one hit equals death. So I feel like I've had to utilize the entire move set in order to achieve that. So uh, it is fun to to, to move around. It's a freaking slide cancel and stuff. It's fun. The only thing is I don't really like the whole uh, dodge roll mechanic because it, it kind of makes you slow down a little bit. Uh, I'd, I'd rather just shield instead. I think it's also important to remember that Kirby games are specifically designed to be easier than most other games it's like my first video game or whatnot so it it could stand to reason that you might need to like rewire your brain for that if that it's going to be super simplistic you know can be designed to be beaten without a super complex move set uh that you would find in other sword fighting games but, so. but, but, but that's the thing with nintendo uh their best work is games that are very simple but can be complex if you want them to be. And I think Kirby right. is also that. I think I think past Kirby games are not that. I think past Kirby games are just, here's the simple game. You could play it like this and then that's it. But I think yeah. the newest Kirby, you you can make it complex if you want it to be. And, and there's a post game that is harder. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think I think it achieves basically what what you would want out of a game like that. Uh, Willow Davis right. says, "Whoa, whoa! Duck with the sword, hit jump button to slide attack, hit it again to slice up, then in the air hit attack button, and he slams the sword down." I think that's all the different. Th- there are the sword has different move sets, and it sounds like the game has what you want it to have. Yeah. Um. Uh, anyway. Ty Raleigh says, uh, always a joy to wake up and watch these. Well, thanks, dude. Thank thanks you. for being here and checking it out. Now we're in the chat real quick. How's it going, guys? Yeah. Make it make it awesome for us. What do you what do you got? What do you got for me? Are you still doing the burn in OLED test? And if so, when will we hear about it next? Uh it is going. Uh I just looked at it about a week ago and nothing changed. So You're not going to hear about it for a really long time. I want it to basically be unplayable the next time I touch it. Congrats on releasing your Wolfden anime, Bob. Thanks, dude. Uh, You can now watch select Wolfden videos in Nihongo. Uh, I wish I had a vanity URL, but I don't. Uh, (laughs) We have a Japanese channel. I I'm going to put it, I'll put it as one of the featured channels on youtube.com slash Wolfden. So if you go there uh, at the bottom where it says the channels, you'll see the Japanese one. Uh, and it has full it Japanese not, voice acting. I think you need like a thousand subscribers to get a vanity URL. No? Probably. 
Sounds about right. Yeah. It's a th- uh, there's a bunch of different things. It's like a thousand subs or something else. Uh, yeah. Or like a certain amount of views or something. And it's a brand new channel. So don't expect anything uh, crazy out of it, you know, just yet. Uh, can you translate them to fucking idiot for me, says Eric? <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. Not too sure if I could do that for you, buddy. Would you rather see Ogre Battle or Quest 64 added to Nintendo Switch Online? What is Ogre Battle? I've heard of Ogre Battle. I don't know if that's as popular as Quest 64, though. I feel like Quest 64 would be pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, Wolf, then... The Hongo. Oh, there it is. Ah. There, I have added it to the website, to youtube.com slash wolfden. I also changed the icon. If you, if you notice, we're blue now. Uh, also, yeah. I also changed uh, the uh, icon for the Clips channel. It's now just a picture of the neon sign that's usually behind me. And I slightly changed the Wolfden podcast icon and now has the, the like green and purplish uh, uh, me and you in the face. It's like just a slight change. Yeah. Just, to add, just to add some color around, you know? Um, anyway, Metascension, Quest 64 is terrible, boring N64 launch era RPG. I keep, I'm interested in Quest 64. Because it's an N64 game people have hundreds of hours in. Yes. But then I see gameplay and I'm like, people played this for that long? (laughs) I mean, we played the Mission Impossible game for God knows how long on N64. Is it because it was a good game or because we were idiots and didn't know any better? The game super is not good. (laughs) (laughs) The, the, The like... uh the 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 laser level is like all we ever played well it's all you ever played because you were the only person who could beat it it was very hard it was a very hard yeah. level it was stupid uh looking even more sugoi now bob oh arigato gozaimasu i almost missed the channel because of the logo change i'm sorry <laughs> i really hope that doesn't happen when i release my video this week but you know you got to rip the band-aid off somehow yeah yeah. <laughs> um Will, have you visited the studio? He has not no, visited the studio. I have not. I have, it's I, a I pain in the ass. Time, I barely have time to take a shit, let alone go to Brooklyn to visit a studio. <laughs> I'm gonna one of these days, probably this year, uh I'm making all you guys come into Brooklyn for a Sunday dinner or something. <laughs> you mean I don't know when the, the family? The whole, the whole family. You're all coming. Family. Okay. Uh, Kid friendly place. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be like an out, and outside situation. Yeah. Uh, probably after I move. Well, no, that it can't be an yeah. outside situation because that'll be the winter. Also, make sure uh, mom has a gun because you know Brooklyn's scary for her. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's what we need is an old yeah Italian woman with a gun in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, Kate McCat, did you all see like the Thor Love and Thunder teaser? I knew Jane Foster Lady Thor was coming, but I was surprised to see her in the trailer. The- Will's upset. Kiss has a song called God of Thunder. Like, you've done four of these movies. Like, why, why is that not crossed your mind? To just put it, I'm not even asking for it to be in the movie proper or like be a central motif. Just like a trailer set to that song. That's it. That's all you need to do. Like everybody talks about, oh, Marvel's really good about fan service. Blah, blah, blah. They have all these golden opportunities to put good rock songs in their movies that match up with the story they're trying to tell or the characters that they're presenting. But they haven't done that since Iron Man 1. Iron Man 2 put the ACDC song War Machine on the soundtrack, but not the movie proper. But, you know, let it slide a little bit. Figured that that's just a one-off. 
Thor comes out. There's a poster that says the God of Thunder. Did they put God of Thunder in the trailer? No. Uh, Dark World? No. Ragnarok? No. We'll use Led Zeppelin, the immigrant song. Oh, big fucking deal, Led Zeppelin. All their songs about Lord of the Rings. Led Zeppelin's not cool. They're a bunch of fucking nerds. And now we get to, <laughs> you know, the fourth one, Love and Thunder. It's a Thor movie with thunder in the title. It's a Thor movie with two Thors in it. Do we get the God of Thunder song? No. We get Sweet Child of Mine, a song that's most famous because this introduction is a guitar practice. <laughs> it's scales. He's just doing scales. It's, he didn't write anything for that song. And like with with No Way Home, like you do three Spider-Man movies that then two of them end with Ramon songs. And so the big finale, the one with the most Spider-Men, you don't <laughs> pick the Ramones cover of the Spider-Man theme? Like what is the matter with you? Whoever is in charge of Marvel's like musical selection should be fired and replaced by me. I don't think it makes any sense for Jane Foster to be in this movie. <laughs> like what, like how, like why, how is she back and Thor? Like it doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, she, it's not like she died. It's not like she went anywhere. She just wasn't in Ragnarok. Yeah, so, or any of the other movies that Thor has been in. Like she's been that, in the first two. Yeah, and how long ago were those? Like <laughs> t over ten years ago. Like true. Like I completely forgot about her, and now she's Thor. Well, I know that fair, in the I, comics th there is a female Thor, but it just doesn't make Jane any Foster. sense. Yeah, and it I doesn't make any sense for for Jane Foster to be back in the in the in the in this universe. I, well, because in the comics, she becomes Thor after like not really being in the comics for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, I, I can see how they could weave Jane Foster back into it. You know, after being gone for so long. Fucking uh, Thunderbolt Ross was in Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk film. And then nothing all the way up until Civil War. They decided <laughs> to bring his ass back. So there's yeah. precedent. It's been done, but we'll see. And yeah, but to be Thor. <laughs> yeah. And before you know, people get mad at me, I love Led Zeppelin. Of, of course I love Led Zeppelin. Everybody loves Led Zeppelin. No, you said they're fucking nerds. They are nerds because all of their songs are about Lord of the Rings. That's not a lie. That's, okay. a, that's the truth. That's a fact. Okay. All You're their not... songs are about Lord of the Rings. I, I now agree with you. Uh, Eric says she just wants to be the star. She's a Thor loser. I hate you. I hate it's true. She did not want to be part of Thor. And then they're like, we'll make you Thor. And she's like, holy shit. Okay, I'm down. I mean, yeah. I got nothing against Natalie Portman in, in Thor. Yeah, I just no. I just think it's really weird to come back and, 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 and this is... And then they just do this. Yeah. Well, I mean... To be fair, Jane Foster really has, you know, two story arcs, you know, being Thor's love interest and being Thor. She, she so. was she was in probably two of the worst MCU movies is what I'm trying to say. Like, and, and she did not bring anything to those movies. And now she's and now she's Thor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Not that I have. I love Natalie Portman, but those yeah. movies were not good. I'll defend the first Thor movie till I die, but that's besides the point. It was not good, uh, but but I, uh, the worst MCU movies? I don't know. There's too many now. Also, yeah. I haven't seen like the, I haven't seen any of the newest ones. <laughs> I'm like I I mean I'm like the shows are fine. Like I have no problem with like Moon Knight and Hawkeye and the shows. The movie proper, like I'm watching them. But, like, aside from Shang-Chi, like, I'm not really excited by any of them. And even Shang-Chi, I'm like, I've seen this before with other characters. Right. So. Yeah. Carson says, they, wait, they need... wait, so is it a movie or a Disney Plus series? Uh, Thor is a movie. It'll be a movie, yeah. I mean, it looks like a good movie. I'm not. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks like it's going to be a very good movie. <laughs> it just, you know, how hard is it? Like. Kiss licenses their music for everything, so it can't be that hard to go up to Gene Simmons and be like, "Here's money, give us 
the rights to God of Thunder for I'm not again I'm looking for it to be in the movie. Just the trailer. Just the trailer set to God of Thunder. That's it. I also That's don't I, ask for. I also don't really need the Guardians of the Galaxy to be there. Like I'm not. I feel like I that's just less. a holdover from where. That's just a holdover from like how he ended up in Endgame. You know. True. Like, I don't know. Marvel has this thing where like they have they feel compelled to finish something on screen, even mm-hmm. if it's not sent. Like Ragnarok, the beginning of Ragnarok finished off like three different storylines before it jumped into what the actual plot of Ragnarok was. Well, doesn't he? At the end of Endgame, doesn't he go off with the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, he goes off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Fat Thor goes off with them? Yeah. But what I'm saying is, we don't necessarily need them to be in uh, Love and Thunder for a lot. They could just be like, I don't want them. I don't. They can be in the beginning, and then like they kick them off the ship, and then it's a Thor adventure again. Like, we don't need a whole like section with the Guardians. The Guardians should just be in Guardians 3. Eric says, Fat Thor made me realize I could be a hero. I love that's one of my favorite things about Endgame is that he just is fat and then and yeah. then stays fat. They don't resolve it. And obviously yeah. this movie they show that he he loses the weight, but yeah. I, I love that. They're like, here he is, he's fat, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they 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 use that they use Infinity War and Endgame to to like kind of just just like they they put their foot down on a lot of of they changed a lot about the universe and one of the things yeah. that they changed and kept was he is fat. <laughs> well, because it, like, it was like representative of like him being broken. Yeah, like he's yeah he's lost everything. So like there's he finds no point to it. So he just lets himself go. And throughout the course of the movie, it's about him like regaining his confidence and realizing he can be a hero again. Yeah, there was, was a lot effective. of there was a lot of uh, controversy because people were like they're using it as like a comedic effect, but it's like no, because he no. shows he could still be a hero when he's fat, and then he stays fat. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, Super Crisp says the Batman is better than anything Marvel's put out since Endgame. True. I the haven't Batman seen anything Marvel's put out since Endgame. The Batman is better than most of uh, the films Marvel has put out prior to Endgame. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it. We're done. Goodbye. Thanks All for right. hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den, regardless of whether or not it's my wife's birthday. Uh, if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this content from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I'm going to PAX East. Yay! So Yay. it's going to be a while till I Twitch stream again. I'm very sorry. I'm trying to put in the work here on Twitch, but uh, I have another job. It's called YouTube. So <laughs> I do a lot of things. I'm trying to do less things. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back Monday, probably. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for being here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Oh, I forgot to raid somebody. Oh. Uh, who's on right now? How about a uh, freaking Cyberquake's playing Dread Mode? Go say hi to him. Bye. Bye. Plus, oh, minus. You have to, you have to hit one. Yeah, that's hey, well, like it. Guess what? Front defense. <laughs>